A couple of your fellow fighters like John Jones and Marvin Vittori are commenting like something with your left pec. Was there an injury or anything at all? Or right pec, I should say? So guys, Derek, more place, more .com. I just got home and my messages are inundated with uh, um, requests to cover Israel Adesanya's um, potential gynecomastia development that seems to have only become apparent this past event, like prior to, uh, well, let's look at it first. Some of these, like I have probably received 200 requests in the past couple hours to cover this and um and probably more to be honest that's just <laughs> that's just on instagram too so i got sent this like a bunch of guys are screen recording it too and sending it to me and showing close-ups here's one that was actually funny his fingers like pointing at the guy <laughs> knowing the thing to point it out to me um and then we have this this is the uh ufc story And you can see, like, plain as day when he's holding up his arms. This nipple is flat, and this one has a giant lump. And it's crazy. Like, this is, like, very blatant to the point where, you know, people are jumping all over him for for uh, steroid use. And they're saying, like, forget Costa. Look at this fucking guy. Here's a, some of the DMs I've been getting. Yo, Derek, Israel Adesanya has fucking guy now. What the fuck? Gyno on Adesanya, bro. Those that look, <laughs> those that look, he has gyno on his right chest. Someone's got gyno. <laughs> What's up with Israel Adesanya's right nipple? Gyno, right? Israel Adesanya gyno. You did an analysis on Paulo Costa. Israel looked like he had some gyno going on. Never seen his pec look like that before. You should make a video on Israel Adesanya showing up with gyno to fight Paulo Costa. He's never had that before. Hopefully, you'll do a video <laughs> on why Izzy had some gyno going on. Um, you've got to do a video on Israel Adesanya's recent abrupt gyno. Look at his fucking gyno. <laughs> and then here is uh, MMAJunkie.com posted this, and it's him uh, kicking Costa. And you can literally see um, pretty damn clearly that the gyno lump is just popping here. And uh, here's a, a, jo a John Jones tweet saying, hey, Costa, fuck off. And if we look at it, like clear as day when he's... Uh, you know, standing there with his arms separated and he has the, you know, chest more like hyperextended. You can see the lump plain as day coming through the titty there. So there's definitely something going on and it's pretty suspect because when you look at historically, he's never really had this. So if you go back to December 6, 2018, you can see him here um, at a weigh-in and he has his nips look fine. You move forward a bit more to March 8, 2019, here he is, no gyno whatsoever. Um, looks completely normal. And to be honest, his physique hasn't really changed a lot in, other than the gyno. He hasn't gotten a lot more muscular since, you know, the time when he didn't have gyno, which wasn't that long ago. Here he is in uh, September 21st, 2019. Right nip looks fine, dude. Going forward to October 5th, 2019, here he is when he's super lean. And you would otherwise see the gyno popping. No gyno. Go forward to his fight with uh, Whitaker here. No gyno whatsoever. Um, and he's like, you know, hyperextending almost. Like you would definitely see the lump in this shot. Here he is with his belt. And he has uh, no gyno again. These are all recent shots too. December 10th, 2019. Less than a year ago. No gyno whatsoever. And now all of a sudden, seven days ago, his... Uh, his little uh, advertisement thing here. I don't even know what this is. Um, and here he is, you know, normal nip, gyno looking nip. Like very, very obvious. Most recent pictures, here he is with the belt covering up, <laughs> potentially covering up the gyno on purpose. I don't know. And then here he is two days ago with the belt around his waist and um, doing his uh, come hither motion and his left nip looks totally fine. And his right just has a giant glandular mass fucking hanging off the bone here. He has, um, like, it's it's very developed to the point where you would wonder, like, like what the fuck is this even gyno? Because it was so, the onset was so quick. And this is such a large amount of tissue. Like, typically, when you have gyno develop, you have a little bit of a, you know, like, glandular tissue build up. And it's, it's noticeable when you're super lean, but it's, like, small. You don't have this giant lump, like, hanging. So, like, this is very sudden and very um, 
odd for the fact that he's gone through his whole career without having this at all. And then all of a sudden he shows up with like brutal gyno potentially. And we're going to get into if it is gyno soon. Here he is at the uh, um, UFC weigh-ins, I believe. And this was, uh, you know, the difference is night and day here too. Here's, um, this was actually pointed out. Some people think that he had a pec tear potentially because his chest is a little bit caved in on the right side. Um, you'll note on the left side, he doesn't have this little like this indent on the side of the pec. Um, however, if you had a pec tear, it typically wouldn't just like hang down with tissue. You'd have a bunch of bruising. You'd have a bunch of, uh, you probably would use it as an excuse during your, uh, you know, post fight conference. You'd probably mention that you had an injury and you still fought through it. Wouldn't be an excuse, but it would be a way to prove that you're even more impressive. And the most notable thing about that to me, like some people were saying, oh, it's a pec tear or whatever. If you look at, um, like, first of all, here he is at weigh-ins, by the way, and this is where he first pulls off his shirt. And you can see the thing hanging off the bone right here, whatever that is. And notably, he's weighing in, still wearing stuff that would add weight. Like, here he is with it around his neck. He's got his fucking shorts on still. Um, you know, he's not wearing a lot of stuff, but still, he's not worried about making weight. So if you were using anabolic androgenic steroids, you know, presumably your weight would be higher, you would think, which we're going to get into soon. But I mean, um, obviously he's not significantly heavier than he was in his past performances, but the difference in the glandular tissue that you see here is interesting. Like here's his left nip looking totally normal. And, um, there's the right nip, just fucking meaty, meaty mass hanging off the bone there. So anyway, the post fight press, bleh, the post fight press conference is, um, the first thing I want to bring up here before we really dig into this is where somebody, a reporter actually asked him about the lump and this is his response. And then one final one, a couple of your fellow fighters like John Jones and Marvin Vittori are commenting like something with your left pec, was there an injury or anything at all? Or right pec, I should say? Why are they looking at my titties? Yeah, how did you have to ask them? Yeah. <laughs> So he basically just brushes off the question entirely, doesn't want to address it whatsoever. If you had an injury where you tore your pec, would you not be very upfront and say, yeah, I tore my pec in training camp and I, you know, one didn't want to have an excuse though. So, you know, I fight through it or whatever. And I still won. Like, wouldn't it seem way more impressive that you had like a minor pec tear and you still fought and you still won? Um, so I would think you'd bring that up. Like, I, I don't think you'd skirt around you know, some potential inhibiting injury that you could otherwise claim as a, you know, advantage in the fight somehow. Like it just seems more impressive if that was the case. And this mass does not really look like a pec tear to me or to most people, I feel like, you know, you guys be the judge, obviously <laughs> that's up for interpretation. So just getting into the evidence of gyno or not gyno gear use or not you know i wasn't expecting to do a natty or not on israel adesanya or dig into what he may or may not be doing because um you know i thought the co the cost of one honestly was like so elaborate i was like okay i'm not gonna i'm not even gonna <laughs> cover the subject of these two guys like at all again to be honest but you know here we are and we're covering it so there was another uh theory going around that it might have been like an infection which if you've ever had a infection, you would know that the area gets um, inflamed that can kind of, uh, like if you've ever seen a bodybuilder do a bad shot, for example, and gets an infection, and that body part basically like gets swollen and f fluffs up and gets like, uh, you know, super water retentive looking and almost looks like a like massive tissue. You know, I guess you could extrapolate that potentially that might be an option if you had like a nipple piercing that went wrong or something, but I highly doubt that's the case. And then obviously you get to the pec tear thing. You know, what are the chances of it being a pec tear? Um, I would say no, because the way he diverted from the question was just like, if it's such an un uncomfortable thing for you to talk about, like if it was straight up like an injury related thing or a training related thing, like I would think you would answer it pretty straight up and not be like, why are you looking at my titty? What the fuck? You know? So <laughs> to me, it's... um seems to imply gyno. So what causes this gyno to begin with? There's a misconception about um, just assuming this guy is using steroids because he has high estrogen levels, which can cause gyno. Um, that's not the only way gyno occurs. And a lot of people just think, oh, you must have super high estrogen levels from steroids to cause gyno. And that's not really the case. So the first thing is explaining briefly what causes gyno. So basically gynecomastia is just the result of um, an imbalance of 
andro androgens to um, stimulating inputs via estrogen. Um, and when I say androgens, I mean like testosterone, DHT, bioavailable androgens that your body endogenously produces versus the amount of estrogens, HGH, IGF-1, prolactin, progesterone, um, things that upregulate aromatase expression, things like that, that are otherwise stimulating inputs in the breast tissue. So if you have an imbalance where you have a dominant amount of stimulating inputs versus um, things that otherwise antagonize, you know, those stimulating mechanisms in the body, this is the scenario in which you start developing um, glandular tissue in the breast because it's not like you just can only get gyno if you have a high estrogen level because, you know, you have guys who are on gear who will have a fucking 100 picogram per milliliter plus estrogen level and not get gyno at all. And the reason is because their androgen levels are so high to antagonize and prevent estrogen induced RNA transcription at the receptor site in the breast tissue. So there are a lot of, there's not a lot of ways to get gyno, but it's like to just assume off the bat that the guy's using, you know, some, some steroid that aromatizes into estrogen and that's why he has gyno. You know, there's a few different ways in which you can get it. And some of them could be, you know, naturally induced, which we're going to get into too. And above and beyond that too, there's genetic polymorphisms. A lot of people don't take into account that can inhibit estrogen metabolism and clearance in the body that would otherwise make you way more prone to gyno than the next guy. So, you know, does he have that? Like, I don't know. I don't know his fucking, I don't have his genome to assess if he has any polymorphisms that have, you know, shitty estrogen clearance to the point where, you know, a little minute, like drop in his test levels from getting older or doing whatever could cause uh, gyno super easily. Cause some guys get gyno, some guys don't get gyno no matter how much gear they're using really, or, you know, how little of gear they're using. Some guys get gyno during puberty. Some guys get don't even get it using 500 megs a test. There is some level at which everyone's going to develop like a little bit or, you know, not get it. But I mean, it, it varies individual to individual based on um, genetic predisposition, like I said, and estrogen metabolism and whatnot. So at the end of the day, you know, like there's a lot of factors that are going to play into your natural testosterone levels, your DHT levels, you know, getting older, you're going to slowly decrease your androgen production, you know, upwards of 1% per year of your total testosterone. And concurrently two to three percent of your actual free testosterone once you start pushing like 35 to 40 plus and he's not very old he's like 31 though so it's kind of like it's odd for him to like for it to even be a possibility that whatever dip he might be experiencing like you experience your peak and natural test in your mid-20s um and then thereafter you're <laughs> you're just like slowly on the decline so you know it's entirely possible that he is experiencing you know dips in testosterone every year and he's down to a point where he doesn't have enough of that inhibitory action from androgens to inhibit the amount of stimulating shit he has going on at the breast tissue. Because every year you start to, you know, the balance of androgens to estrogen creeps more un infavorably um, in the direction of, I'll explain in a bit, but basically in terms of enhancing your likelihood of gynecomastia. So let's kind of go into the scenarios in which things could happen basically where he gets gyno and it's not all gear related, but some of it is, which we're going to explain what compounds and why they would be selected in a sec. Hopefully not a sec. This video is going to be longer than I anticipated and I apologize, but this is long winded pharmacology information that is not easy to explain in two seconds. So if you want to say this video could have been done in 10 minutes, suck my fucking left nut dude. So anyways, uh, <laughs> so he could be experiencing a drop in natural testosterone levels, which if you have, a relative lack of testosterone and DHT to antagonize estrogen-induced RNA transcription at the receptor site, you're going to have a higher likelihood of gyno. Also, people have talked about his cannabis use. So THC, um, there is you know clinical literature that suggests that it can lower your testosterone production um, with long-term use. As well, there are also rodent models that show that it stimulates breast tissue development. And you know how much can you read into that? It's just another factor that could layer on top of it, though, because he self-admittedly is a... Uh, you know, a user of it and it's not prohibited out of comp out of competition. He can use it whenever he wants out of competition. So it's entirely possible he has, you know, a dip in natural test from getting slightly older. He, um, I don't know what it is. Like I'm assuming his lifestyle and diet is on point. So I would think at 31, unless he had like shitty ish levels to begin with, that wouldn't be the case, but you never know because everyone genetically has a certain starting point. Maybe he naturally has low testosterone and DHT levels or a high SHBG or whatever. But anyways, marijuana adds another layer of complication to things where you could have potentially lower testosterone and DHT levels as a consequence of that as well, which then as a result would um, lower the ability to antagonize 
estrogen, estrogen induced activity at the receptor site, like I said, but there's also studies that show that you know, marijuana has no effect negatively on testosterone levels. And there's even data that suggests that it has a, uh, it can, components of it can actually compete for estrogen receptor binding. So you would, you know, in theory, that may even have an anti-estrogenic effect in uh, practical application. You know, I highly doubt it, but I mean, like that's how serums work. Well, they're selective, but I mean, <laughs> that's how things that otherwise are used to prevent estrogen from binding to the receptor and causing gyno development um, facilitate their functions by competing for the estrogen receptor. So that's notable. There's also been rumors of 5-alpha reductase inhibition. So if he is somebody who wants to keep his hair, would he have started finasteride potentially? That's entirely possible too. And it turns out that finasteride and dutasteride, I highly doubt he would have jumped on dutasteride, but if he jumped on finasteride, if you look at uh, the USADA UFC anti-doping program, it's not prohibited in competition or out of competition, which is contradictory to what a lot of people think, where historically it's actually been referred to as a masking agent, like in the uh, US track and field, um, historically US track and field athletes have accepted uh, suspensions for doping violations in the context of using finasteride because it's been you know perceived as a masking agent by USADA so it's kind of uh interesting how it's not banned at all in or out of competition in the UFC's updated you know um prohibited list whereas you know fucking 14 years ago you could get away with this in or you couldn't get away with this in certain sports but in the UFC which is super strict in competition and out of competition use of finasteride is not prohibited as well as dutasteride if you wanted to do that. So if he was using something to prevent hair loss like finasteride, what happens when you use that is it inhibits a significant amount of DHT to you know prevent hair loss from accelerating, um, which is a significant thing that all otherwise is what prevents you from get gyne, getting gyno because that's one of the inhibitory um, inputs that you get from the androgen spectrum. So not androgen spectrum, androgen side of the equation. So basically the things that prevent gyno from developing if you decrease the most androgenic hormone in your body by 70 percent with finasteride or 99 percent with dutasteride you have that much less dht to prevent gyno from developing and you'll see you know clinically reports of gyno gynecomastia development there's a lot of reports online it's rare though so it typically only occurs in guys that have low free testosterone levels, which again, these things could all layer on top of each other to make things worse. So that's kind of like where we're getting to at the end. We're going to get into the de designer compounds soon. But anyways, and then dutasteride too, it's even worse. It increases your estrogen levels by 22%, whereas finasteride only increases your estrogen levels by 15. So when you take finasteride or dutasteride, it inhibits 5-alpha reductase. Your testosterone can no longer go through to convert to DHT through 5-alpha reductase. So now you have more testosterone. And yes, you have more total testosterone in your blood. But as a consequence of that, now you have more converting to estrogen as well. So finasteride increases estrogen by 15%, or estradiol, I should say. And then create dutasteride increases it by roughly 22%, if I recall correctly. You know, those statistics might be wrong, but at the end, end of the day, there is a significant bump in estradiol and there's a significant decrease in DHT, which is otherwise the thing that largely protects you from gyno and the thing <laughs> that largely causes gyno. So that is a potential possibility as well, the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Something else to note is he's not fat and he doesn't get fat in the off season. So typically guys who develop gyno through, you know, poor diet and lifestyle is because they get fatter. Fat increases the amount of aromatase activity in your body. The more aromatase activity you have, the more estrogen you produce from your testosterone. And then if you have a higher estrogen level, that provides more negative feedback to your HPTA, which then tells your body you have enough estrogen. So you don't need to produce more testosterone because you have enough estrogen already. So then it decreases your testosterone production. So it's like a vicious circle with guys when they're holding too much fat where their body is basically telling, your, your brain is basically being signaled to not make as much testosterone because you have more estrogen being created from your fat. So is that the case with him though? Like, no, I don't think so. So that's kind of, you know, off the table, but it's worth noting nonetheless, because that's one of the ways guys that are natural get gynecomastia often. So again, this goes back to the stimulatory um, components relative to the amount of androgens that antagonize it. So his body composition hasn't really changed that much from his previous fights to now. Like maybe he's, like if you look at the shot in 2019, March 8th, 8, 8, 2019, we had no gyno. He looks as good here muscular, muscularity-wise than he did um, at his most recent weigh-in. Like he actually 
looks, you know, solid here. It looks exactly the same, in my opinion. I don't think he looks like he gained a significant amount of muscle at all. So his body composition has largely stayed the same. So why is it that he's suddenly getting gyno and he wasn't before? Um, and he's still making weight, like easily. Like it's not like his weight is cranked up or anything. So it would kind of indicate like how could he be on gear if his body composition is exactly the same and the only thing, and even his body weight is the same and everything is the same. And the only thing that's changed is he has gyno. You know, that goes back to the layering thing with the, you know, the age, decreased testosterone levels, cannabis use potentially, 5-alpha reductase inhibition potentially, but now we're getting into the designer anabolic androgenic steroids. So, you know, if you used an anabolic androgenic steroid as a UFC um, athlete, does using steroids equate to you gaining weight necessarily? Like, does it necessarily mean you're going to gain muscle when you use it? No, it doesn't because there are certain compounds that skew heavily in the neurology side of the spectrum in terms of their um, androgenic activity in the body. So for example, if you compared halotestin versus the traditional anabolic uh, milligram for milligram, the only reason you use something like halotestin is to drive acute performance outcomes and reap the benefits of its psychoactive effects. And you, you really wouldn't build much muscle with it at all, as opposed to something like a traditional, um, you know, like testosterone or anandrolone. So it's certainly possible that he just use a designer, use a designer compound that is very androgenic and um, you know, not very anabolic at all. And frankly, for performance outcomes, that would be a superior choice for him anyways, as excessive muscle tissue will gas you out, slow you down, and he's a technical striker. So for him, he would benefit most from something that enhances his firing rate of motor unit recruitment and heavily skews in favor of spiking sympathetic drive as much as possible rather than um, something that you know drives up uh, muscular volume and body weight. So fighters need to fight at as low of a weight class as possible without compromising their performance. So they need a favorable ratio of force production relative to their body weight. So they like they benefit greatly from increased aggression, neurological enhancement. So that specific that specific scenario for Adesanya is, you know, a scenario in which he'd want to use something that is skewed more towards not in the direction of the accrual of muscle mass, but more towards the androgenic activity side of the spectrum that is just you know as much increase in force production with a relative lack of weight gain like we want maximum force production and aggression with relative lack of body weight so the two scenarios in which a designer anabolic androgenic steroid like there are threshold cutoffs for these you know traditional anabolics i'm outlining in the usada testing parameters like they have very low thresholds for um, you know, traditional compounds in their metabolite, like Halo, like I mentioned, that they pick up through gas chromatography, mass spectrometry um, with ease. So like, I guess, you know, if you can plan the pharmacokinetics of it around the tests and clear it out of your system in time, you could get away with traditional anabolics. But, you know, the more high likelihood would be that you have a synthetic anabolic energetic steroid that is not on the list and is otherwise an analog that they don't have a test for yet because there's so many there's so many anabolics that failed clinical trials that are just like shelved and in some buried in some fucking research paper somewhere or some guy just like tweaks and modifies a bunch of shit in a lab and makes a compound that uh, might not be the uh, you know equivalent of something like Halo but it could be you know close and not on the list so then it would be a viable alternative so that's certainly a possibility and the scenarios in which that could cause gyno are if the stimulatory inputs of stimulating the gyno production like i said exceed the antagonism of whatever androgens are there so if you're using an exogenous anabolic androgenic steroid that shuts your hpta down you now have no antagonism of gyno production except for the anabolic that you're or the androgen anabolic androgenic steroid that you're using for your performance enhancement and if the thing is a potent substrate for aromatase like it's very you know converts heavily to estrogen or whatever you otherwise don't really have something that is like you have to rely fully on whatever you're using whatever like random designer chemical this is to hopefully be androgenic enough to prevent you know that estrogen induced rna transcription at the receptor site so it's entirely possible that um, the gyno could be caused by, you know, shutting down his HBTA using a designer compound that is not detectable via GCMS. And then, you know, or alternatively, he's using something traditional that he's trying to clear out of, out of his system before tests. And when he shows up to the test, his HBTA is shut down 
At which point it doesn't matter if you have a low estrogen level. Like a lot of people don't understand you could have an in range estrogen level and still get gyno. Like this is why guys with low testosterone, you'll see guys with normal testosterone levels, like a 700 nanogram per deciliter total test level and like a 35 picogram per milliliter estrogen level, estradiol level, and they don't have gyno. And then you see a guy with like a 200 nanogram per deciliter total test and like a, a low estrogen level on paper, maybe like 15, 20 or something. And somehow he has gyno. Like, how do you explain that? It's not that his estrogen is too high. Rather, it's that he doesn't have enough androgens to deal with the input from whatever he has on this side of the spectrum. So it's not always just high estrogen that causes gyno. You could be, this is why you're so gyno prone during a post-cycle therapy phase, because you're at a point where you're shut down and you otherwise have a dominating profile of all these other stimulatory inputs like HGH, IGF-1, um, whatever amount of estrogen is there, fucking prolactin, progesterone, whatever it is, things that upregulate aromatase activity while you still have shut down androgens. So, you know, there's a lot of possibilities here in terms of what could have happened and, um, you know, like it's very common for hypogonadal guys who have, you know, clinically deficient testosterone levels to still get gyno. So if a guy gets gyno just out of nowhere, to me, that would sort of imply you got shut down using something exogenously, developed gyno, and the onset was super, like, you, you know, this is all speculation at the end of the day. Um, but those are the scenarios in which I that make any sense to me. Like, sure, he could have had some like triggering life event that was like insanely stressful or like if he had some brutal injury that like put him out of commission he might have had had a scenario in which he had but like i haven't seen that historically from what i saw from the past year he's he's been ready to go to fight he hasn't had any like crazy event happen he has had his health has been fine so you know maybe his testosterone levels are just getting low like very early like it's not uncommon nowadays with all the you know endocrine disruption and whatnot for guys in their early 30s to have clinically low T levels. So it's entirely possible that he just has low T levels as he's getting older and now he's developing gyno. Or alternatively, he could be using an exogenous designer steroid that shuts him down. And then when he has to go off, he's shut down periodically when he gets tested and he passes the test, but then he has to deal with developing gyno during that lag time where he has to then recover natural function or go back on whatever he was using or whatever he was using wasn't androgenic enough to prevent gyno from developing while he was on it. Or it was super estrogenic where it caused gyno regardless because the thing wasn't androgenic enough to offset the amount of estrogen it produced. So there's a lot of scenarios here, but those are the scenarios that sort of make sense to me. Like it could be a culmination of things, could be his age, de decreased testosterone production, could be the cannabis use, compounding on top of that potentially, 5-alpha reductase inhibition with finasteride, and um, using something suppressive, and then you you know have to clear it out of your system and you're shut down like on and off all the time and it causes gyno, or the compound itself causes gyno. So um, the fact that it just came out of nowhere, to me sort of is a bit of a red flag, and those are the things that I think are on the table personally, and the exogenous um, hormones that, you know, provide negative feedback that shuts down your HPTA and then having a deficiency of androgens to prevent gyno development sort of seems like the most reasonable conclusion for it to just have sudden onset, whereas previous years you didn't have it. So at the end of the day, gyno is only going to develop if you don't have enough androgens to offset whatever is on, on this side of the spectrum. So you have to consider that when you're thinking of everything. So he's either low T, genetically somehow at 31 or like via certain things in his lifestyle, his genetics, his uh, whatever he's using, um, or he's shut himself down to the point where he has such a low amount of testosterone now that, you know, even a normal amount of estrogen on paper and all these other inputs are enough to cause gyno. And, you know, the sudden onset of it is a uh, very, you know, red flag. Like it's a fucking massive amount of tissue and he pretty much skirted around it and didn't want to discuss it at all. So that sort of, you know, implies sketchiness um, because if it was just an injury or something normal, you would probably want to just like, you know, not have a bunch of people talking about how you have a titty now. Like I would just like put it out in the open and be like, oh yeah, I had a fucking a minor tear during, you know, this fucking training camp or whatever. Like I would, I would rather people know if that's actually what happened than think I have a tit. So it seems like it's an actual tit based on what he's saying, unless he comes out and uh, clarifies otherwise. So at the end of the day, he has too much on this side, not enough on this side for whatever reason. And for it to be such a sudden onset and for it to develop to that drastic of a degree, it would imply exogenous hormone use because if you were just naturally declining, it's at a fairly slow rate. It's not like you just get crushed to zero over the span of eight months. 
it would be a slow decline with a gr gradual tissue development, not just like, like the amount of tissue he's developed in this short time frame, like implies like, like almost like hypogonadism. So, um, which would typically only be seen in a 31 year old via exogenous, you know, like designer steroid use. So, and the reason I'm saying designer steroid instead of testosterone is because like, sure, you can, you know, skirt around the testosterone to epitestosterone ratio with bioidentical testosterone, like I mentioned in the Costa video. But for Adesanya, with his fighting style and what would benefit him as an athlete, it would not be to drive volume and use, you know, a bioidentical testosterone. It would be to use something, like I said, that is skewed in the neurological side of things. And, you know, you could argue that for Costa too, but it depends what they have access to and what they're doing. So those are the scenarios in which I think, you know, anything goes, they can all layer on top of each other. Some of them might not be relevant whatsoever, but that's just me spitballing. And let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It was an interesting development and a lot of people were shocked and, you know, more people are talking about the gyno than like the victory. It seems like it's fucking insane. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Please like subscribe if you want to get more deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology um or you know performance enhancing drug use in sport and risk management how to stay healthy um in regards to trt and stuff like that i recommend you subscribe to the newsletter it's the first link in the description below you're not going to get sent my articles unless you sign up for that and a lot of incentive to do so because they are very elaborate deep dives with concise subsections with table of contents and citations and links to all of the clinical studies I reference in the content for you to delve into further for your own personal research if it interests you. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Um, you can check out my social media platforms um, at moreplates underscore more dates on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to listen on audio instead of burn through your data on YouTube, check it out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.